In a previous video, we discussed resonant frequencies on a string. And what we were doing was controlling the frequency that we were driving the string at. And we went through a big range of frequencies, and we noticed that there are some special frequencies where the amplitude grows large, and the string begins flopping back and forth as a standing wave. And we called those resonant frequencies F1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. So these are the special frequencies for which the waves on the string interfered constructively with their own reflections. That happens when you fit a wave onto the string so that both ends of that wave have a displacement of zero, which matches the boundary conditions of the string. So in the first picture, I have half of a wavelength equals the length of the string. In the second one, a whole wavelength equals the length of the string. In the third one, one and a half wavelengths equals the length of the string. And in the final one, two wavelengths equals the length of the string. We then solved for lambda n in general and found that it is 2L over n. We applied the wave speed equation, v equals f lambda, to solve for the nth resonant frequency and found that it was given by vn over 2L. And finally, we plugged in n equals 1 and said f1 is v over 2L, so then I could replace v over 2L with f1. And we found that every resonant frequency was an integer multiple of the fundamental that first one. So there's a distinction that I want to make very clear here. This string has these resonant frequencies where if I drive it at that special frequency, I see the amplitude grow. But what about a realistic string where I just pluck it? So in this example, I have a bass string that I'm plucking. So we're not driving the string at a special frequency. We're just agitating it randomly with a pluck. What happens on a plucked string is that you start out with infinitely many different frequencies all superimposed on the string. But these special resonant frequencies, these are the survivors because their reflections interfere constructively with each other. So these are the vibrations that live a very long time on a plucked string. And when you pluck a string, the tone is going to be dominated by the fundamental. And then as you go to higher and higher overtones, their amplitudes decrease. Every instrument has a unique mixture of overtones for any note that's played on it. And that produces the unique sound of that type of instrument. That's called the timbre. And it's how you tell the difference between this, the sound of a ringing guitar string or a ringing violin string. So we have a little more sophisticated kind of example this time. And it's actually going to incorporate the equation relating the tension in linear density and velocity on a string. So I'm just going to put this up here for reference. We're just as a reminder, the linear density, that's the mass per unit length. So our example says we're plucking a low E on a bass guitar, and we get a mixture of harmonics, and the first one, that's the fundamental, is 41 hertz. That's a low E. But we also get all these overtones that are simultaneously ringing. So all of these higher vibrations are also survivors because they interfere constructively with themselves. I'm given the length of the vibrating portion of the string, so that's just between the bridge and the nut. There is some string beyond that for wrapping around a tuning peg. And I said before stringing the instrument, the entire string was weighed at 60 grams for a total length of 1.35 meters. Again, the whole string is longer than just the vibrating portion when it's installed on the bass. And then I want the tension in the string. Well, I can see how I'm supposed to go after the tension. But first, I need to figure out what the wave speed is. So I'm going to focus on the fundamental here. And that's where half a wavelength is equal to the length of the string. In other words, the wavelength is 2L. So that's twice 1.2 meters. That's 2.4 meters wavelength. Again, that's the oscillation that has the middle of the string moving back and forth with maximum amplitude. I know the frequency there. That dominates the tone that I hear when I pluck the string. That's 41 hertz. And then I use the wave speed equation, V equals F lambda. So for the first harmonic, that's an F1 lambda 1. That's 41 hertz multiplied by 2.4 meters, and I get the wave speed on my string. That gives me 98.4 meters per second. All right, then I go to my equation that relates the wave speed to the tension and the linear density. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to find that linear density. So the mass per unit length was 60 grams or 0 0.060 kilograms over a length of 1.35 meters, and that gives me 0 0.044 four kilograms per meter. Now I manipulate this equation 
to solve for t. I get v squared equals t over mu, which means t is mu v squared. Now I can plug in and find my tension. And this comes out to 430 newtons. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.